You're listening to Meditating the Word. We will read the entire Bible this year using the Blue Letter Bible One Year Chronological Plan. You can download a copy of the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm using is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. That will help others find this podcast, and you'll get a notification every time a new episode drops. This is Day 30. Today, we'll be reading Exodus chapters 1 through 3, the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. All the souls who came out of Jacob's body were seventy souls, and Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph died, as did all his brothers and all that generation. The children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who didn't know Joseph. He said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let's deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it happen that when a war breaks out, they also join themselves to our enemies and fight against us and escape out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. They built storage facilities for Pharaoh, Python, and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread out. They started to dread the children of Israel. The Egyptians ruthlessly made the children of Israel serve, and they made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and in brick, and in all kinds of service in the field, all their service in which they ruthlessly made them serve. The king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other, Pua. And he said, When you perform the duty of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and didn't do what the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the baby boys alive. The king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and saved the boys alive? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. Because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, You shall cast every son who is born into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Chapter 2 A man of the house of Levi went and took a daughter of Levi as his wife. The woman conceived and bore a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could no longer hide him, she took a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and with pitch. She put the child in it and lay it in the reeds by the river's bank. His sister stood afar off to see what would be done to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe at the river. Her maidens walked along by the riverside. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant to get it. She opened it and saw the child, and behold, the baby cried. She had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? 
Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. The young woman went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. The woman took the child and nursed it. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, and said, Because I drew him out of the water. In those days when Moses had grown up, he went out to his brothers and saw their burdens. He saw an Egyptian striking a Hebrew, one of his brothers. He looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. He went out the second day, and behold, two of the Hebrews were fighting with each other. He said to them, Who did the wrong? Why do you strike your fellow? He said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you plan to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Moses was afraid and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and lived in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. When they came to Reuel, their father, he said, How is it that you have returned so early? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and moreover he drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Moses was content to dwell with the man. He gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have lived as a foreigner in a foreign land. In the course of those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed because of the bondage, and they cried. And their cry came up to God because of their bondage. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the children of Israel, and God understood. Chapter 3 Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the wilderness and came to God's mountain, to Horeb. The Lord's angel appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the middle of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I will go now and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he came over to see, God called to him out of the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, Here I am. He said, Don't come close. Take off your sandals, for the place you are standing on is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. Moreover, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, Certainly I will be with you. This will be the token to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, 
you shall serve God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and tell them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, You shall tell the children of Israel this, I am has sent me to you. God said moreover to Moses, You shall tell the children of Israel this, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and tell them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice. You shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall tell him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I know that the king of Egypt won't give you permission to go, no, not by a mighty hand. I will reach out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do among them, and after that he will let you go. I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it will happen that when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor and of her who visits her house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and clothing. You shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. You shall plunder the Egyptians. Father God, Just as you heard the cries of the children of Israel, we know that you hear us today. You are the same God today as you were yesterday and as you will be tomorrow. You are I am who I am. Help us, Father, to not act rashly. While Moses' heart was in the right place, wanting to save his brothers, his actions were wrong and likely delayed the freeing of the children of Israel. But you always make a way. And while we sometimes wish we had a burning bush in the physical showing us the way to go, we know that we have your holy fire, Holy Spirit, within us every day. Thank you, Father. There could be no better gift. May we listen to and follow his direction today and every day. Amen. Please join us in our Facebook community and share your thoughts about today's reading. You'll find a link in the notes. And again, thank you for joining me as we read the Bible in a year. I can't wait to see you tomorrow as we continue our journey. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.